Hi, I'm Connie Sharon, and I'm excited to be partnering with Leading Age Florida on this video series of how to be the best of the best. Well, the interesting thing about care plans is that for a surveyor, it's all about the care plans. If heaven forbid you ever have a lawsuit, it's all about the care plan. But sometimes in long-term care facilities, it's nothing about the care plan. And so what we have to do is to change so that the care plan is the document that was intended to be, that it's used by everybody, that it identifies residents. We've made care plans so complicated over the years, and people have so many opinions about care plans. And so today I hope to be able to just clarify some of those. And really for care plans, you just need to step back and just really think, what is the purpose of the document? It's not an exercise in fertility. It's not an exercise to see, can we come up with 1,000 different things that we're gonna do for this resident? These are all the best ideas we could, but we're not really doing those things. So if you just step back and say, what is the care plan document about? First of all, the first process is to assess. You have to figure out what the problem is. You cannot solve a problem if you don't know what the problem is. Just if your car breaks down, you can't repair your car if you don't know what the, care, what the car problem is. So the first thing you have to do is assess. The best thing assessing is asking the question, why? So the resident can't toilet independently or the resident's incontinent, why? Because the resident wets themselves, why? Just keep asking why until you get to the problem. Once you identify the problem, the rest of the care plan is easy because the goal is the opposite of the problem. If you cannot make your goal the opposite of the problem, you have not identified what the problem is. So in the example, people will care plan dementia is the problem. The opposite of dementia would be what? No dementia, not possible. Dementia is not the problem. They can't find their room and it causes them to be have anxiety. So that's a problem that you can solve. You can help figure out how they can solve their, find their rooms by some creative approaches. So one way to know if you have identified a proper care plan is to look and see, is the goal the opposite of the problem statement? Once you've identified what the goal is, then the next really becomes the strength of the facility. That's when you get to the interventions. And those interventions need to be real interventions that you're doing. And once you remove all of those things that people put on their care plans that are just routine care, such as praise, encourage, um, all of those, th those things don't need to be on the care plan. Those are just fillers that you're trying to fill. You wanna look, how can we really solve this resident's problem? So let's go back to the resident can't find their room related to a cognitive loss, related to a diagnosis of dementia. Goal is resident will find their room then how can you help the resident find the room? There's many creative ways that you could help the resident find the room. You could put a picture of them on the, on the outside of the door so that they see themselves. You can use color code stripping down the hallway because color, sometimes with dementia residents, is the last thing that they'll lose the ability to identify. So follow the red strip down to your room. There's many ways that you could help a resident find their room and you've solved that problem for that resident. So the thing with care planning is it has to be a document of things that you're really doing. It has to be a fluid document. It has to be a document that people look at. You know, sometimes with care plans, the first time that people are looking at them is when a survey team comes in. And then they're looking at it and they're saying, well, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this. Um, care plans need to be looked at. You know, we've gone electronic for a lot of the care plan processes, whether you're electronic or whether you're doing paper and pencil or pen, you still must have staff be able to look at the care plan. The care plan meeting that you're required to have, sometimes I think we have all of the wrong people in these meetings. They should all go back to their offices and the real people who are providing the care should be attending the care plan meetings. Time, of course, is a, is a, is a factor. I always recommend doing care planning. Um, once you have the care plan developed, review that care plan at the bedside. And that's when you can call in that permanent teammate, the CNA, the CNA, the charge nurse, 
you know, the, the person who's providing activities on the unit. These are the people that should be attending the care plan meeting. These are the people that are really providing the care. They shouldn't be attended by all the disciplines and the head of the departments that are not really providing the care. They should be attended by the people that are providing the care. I'd much rather see a shorter care plan that actually lists the things that you're doing for a resident than a 37-page care plan where things are not really being carried out. Um, once you have the care plan developed, then the care plan needs to be updated. So now you find that this intervention isn't working. You have a, a potential for fall related to um, a new admission, and you find that the resident falls. Then. You need to assess again, why did the resident fall? What was the resident doing? And do that fall assessment that is required and then update the care plan. And that needs to be done right away. You know, people say, well, why can't we wait till Monday? And I tell them, okay, so a resident's admitted um, on a Thursday, they fall on a Friday night and your plan is to update that care plan on Monday. Now the resident falls on Saturday. How do you explain that? That you have not updated that care plan, that you haven't tried to figure out why did the resident fall? And what can we do to prevent that fall? You know, so, you know, the, the um, as I said, the CNAs need to attend the care plans. Um, there's ways that you can be creative to do that. We shouldn't make care plans as complicated as they are. Care plans need to be simple documents, you know, with just the real problems and solutions. People ask me all the time, what should be put on the care plan? What should not be put on the care plan? If it's a real potential for the resident, it should be put on the care plan. I tell people there's a couple that should be on every care plan for every resident and one of those is potential for fall. There is no resident that does not have a potential for fall. Everybody has a potential for falling, whether you're in a nursing home or whether you're in the community. People can trip, people fall. You know, if the resident is not able to offload their weight, to shift their weight, then they need to have a potential for pressure sore development on the care plan. So there's certain things that should be on every care plan. Um, but beyond that, care plans should be then individualized and they should be real potentials or actual problems for the residents. So again, the care plan needs to be relevant at all times. So if a resident has a significant change and the significant change is the resident has a cold and that's going to be resolved in a short period of time, then it doesn't necessarily need to be on the care plan. But if they have a significant change, such as they're now non-ambulatory and they were ambulatory, that's going to drive you through the MDS process and it'll drive you then into updating the care plan. If the resident changes, you need to update the approaches or the problem list. Again, it needs to be a fluid document, a document that changes, it's not set in stone. So whether the resident improves or whether the resident declines or the resident has a new problem, <clears throat> like potential for pressure sore development should always stay on the care plan if the resident's non-ambulatory or unable to offload their weight. But if they develop a pressure sore, that should be a separate care plan. Once that pressure sore is resolved, it can be removed from the care plan.